Hey guys, so second hour, this is the second part. Um, we are on page seven, practice two, England's control. You're gonna go through these questions. You're gonna be able to answer those because I just read the chapter to you, okay? There's only two of them. I'm sure you can do it. The American Revolution. The war between the colonies and England began in 1775. The war started because the colonists wanted the English parliament to give them more rights. In 1776, the colonists decided that they were through taking orders from England. They claimed to be a free nation, separate from England. The colonists did this in a document that they called the Declaration of Independence. However, the colonists' statement of independence was not enough. Colonial troops had to continue fighting along and hard against England. At times, things looked hopeless for the new nation. Countries such as France, Spain, and the Netherlands gave the colonial army money and weapons to help with their cause. Still, it looked as though England would win. But the colonists didn't give up. They continued to fight. The revolution took a turn. Finally, colonial troops defeated British troops in 1783. Soon after, the United States was recognized as a new nation. Below are some of the major events that took place before or during the war. In 1768, 4,000 English soldiers took over the city of Boston, Massachusetts. The Eng English knew that the Boston was a place where many colonists had spoken out against English rule. Many colonists were forced to surrender their homes to English soldiers without payment. <clears throat> One day in 1770, a group of boys threw snowballs at some English soldiers. The soldiers were standing in a square outside the Boston State House. A fight followed, and a number of people became involved. The soldiers shot at the crowd growing, killing five people, and the event was called the Boston Mass Massacre. In 1773, England tried to force the colonists to import tea from only one English company. They refused to do it. Instead, a group of colonists disguised themselves as natives. They boarded the tea ships in Boston Harbor and threw the tea overboard. This is called the Boston Tea Party of 1773. The English were enraged. They closed down the city of Boston completely, and the colonists realized they would soon have to fight for their rights. The British accents caused the colonies to unite in defense of Massachusetts. Colonists met in Philadelphia in 1774 at the First Continental Congress. They discussed ways to resist England. The real shots of the war were fired on April 19, 1775 in Lexington, Massachusetts. Three months later, George Washington was appointed to his post as Commander-in-Chief of the Colonial Army. On July 4, 1776, the colonies declared their freedom in the Declaration of Independence. They no longer wanted to be a part of England. Excuse me. <clears throat> English, England refused to recognize the Declaration of Independence. It would not grant the colonies their independence, so the war continued. In, in battle after battle, more soldiers were killed. The Declaration of Independence did help the colonists get financial support from other countries. France joined forces with the colonies in 1778. Spain in 1779, and the Netherlands in 1780. These countries provided extra money and supplies that the colonists needed to win the war. Some of these countries also sent soldiers to help the colonists fight the English. One Frenchman, the Marquis de Lafayette, was a great aid to the Americans. He helped Washington defeat the English at Yorktown, Virginia in 1781. In 1783, the war was over. Colonial troops had triumphed. A peace treaty between England and the United States was signed in Paris. A treaty is an agreement or a contract between countries, some treaties, and wars. In the Treaty of Paris, England recognized the American colonies as a free and independent nation. The two countries agreed that the American, America's boundaries were the Great Lakes in the north and the Mississippi River in the west. So, Crispus attacks. Crispus attacks may have been the first man killed in the American Revolution. Attucks, a man of mixed African and native descent, had been a slave, but he escaped slavery, became a seaman. Attucks, Attucks was shot by English soldiers during the Boston Massacre. A statue of Attucks now stands on Boston Common, a few short blocks from where he and four others died. Now, we have practice three. Whoops. Okay. 
So you have practice three, the American Revolution. There's three threat questions there. I want you to go ahead and answer those. You can go ahead and just read over what's in the purple while it's in a darker box. Uh, it's the American Revolution result of the colonists' protest against the rule. So that one is just kind of like food for thought. The Declaration of Independence. And this is at the bottom of page um, 11. In 1776, shortly after the war began, a group of men from all the colonies met. They voted to free themselves from England's rule. Their arguments for independence were summed up in one document or paper. It was called the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration outlined the colonists' complaints against England. It also gave their reasons for wanting independence. There are three important principles or ideas in this document, and they are as follows. The colonies are free and independent of England. All men are equal. We found that to be kind of a discrepancy, didn't we? Governments are set up to protect the rights of the people, and they receive the powers from the people. At first, some of the colonists opposed separation. They wanted to reconcile with England. That is why they thought the colonies could would work out their problems with England. But in the end, these people agreed to break from England. The Declaration of Independence was signed in July, in July 4th of 1776. Now, right down here, we have practice four. Once again, two questions. And what it's doing, it's just reinforcing what I've already read to you. So you're making sure you understand it by being able to answer those questions, okay? Right below those questions is think about it. Okay, I'm just gonna read this to you and I want you to think about it. Many of the colonists wanted independence from England, but others wanted to keep their ties to England. These people, excuse me, were called loyalists because they wanted to stay loyal to England. Loyalists did not support the revolution. Put yourself in the place of a person who just arrived in the new world. Can you think of any reason for not wanting to rebel against England? Write your answer on a shepherd's sheet of paper. Okay, so just think about it, all right? The colonists win the war. How did the colonists win a war against a great power like England? They have were several reasons. Some are listed below. In many ways, the colonists had better strategies for fighting. The way armies fought in those days was to meet each other in a battlefield. Row after row of soldiers would shoot at each other, and but the colonists fought more like the, the natives. They would dart in and out of the trees, firing when they saw a target, and the English soldiers were made good targets because they wore brightly colored uniforms. These uniforms earned them the nickname, the Redcoats. The French and the Spanish helped the colonists fight against England. These countries had many reasons for entering the war, and one reason was to get back at England for past wars. Many of the English generals did not take the war seriously. They thought they could win without a problem. As a result, they were careless and made many mistakes. Once the war was over and the treaty was signed, the new nation still had many problems to solve. One major problem was that the long war had put the country in debt. This meant that they owed money to other people. Also, the 13 colonies, now called states, had to learn to work together, and it was not going to be easy. Okay. Finishing this up, there is, um, in real life, sometimes songs come to stand for certain events in our lives. When the English surrendered at Yorktown, the story goes that the England... English band played a song called The World Turned Upside Down. This song became a theme song for the end of the Red Revolution. Many people on both sides were shocked by the colonists' success. They probably felt as though the world was turning upside down when the British lost. All right. Your last practice questions are on, it's practice five, the colonists win the war. All right. You should be able to answer those based on what we just read. And then there is a timeline that gives you a general idea of how some of this stuff happened. A lot of it is going to feel like it's a review because we've already covered these things. But it's a nice reminder for you guys. It's, it's a way to reinforce what you've already gained. All right. Take care. And I will talk to you soon. Second hour.